wild deer. We have six different species, totaling two million animals roaming the British countryside. This abundance allows for the sustainable harvest of one of the most delicious and free range meats you can buy, venison. And here it is. This is a venison steak, the most free range meat in the UK. Today, I'm gonna to start my journey by going to meet David, who's gonna harvest a couple of fallow deer, which will soon be turned into these. For the first part of this process, I met with David, a gamekeeper and deer manager in Southern England. So what's the plan today? The plan today is we're gonna go start stalking, looking for fallow crickets. Okay. Um, hopefully they'll play ball. Um, the aim is to start to cull the fallow prickets and to do it as humanely as possible um, with the right gear. Because um, at the end of the day, what we're producing is meat to go on the table. And it's got to be treated and respected that way. How are we going to select which animals to shoot? We'll be looking for the smaller of the prickets because we want to maintain a good herd. So we're looking for a good body size to keep and a good antler. So you look at the height and the width of the spread of, of the antlers and you, then you take out the smaller ones and the weaker ones really, that's what we're doing. Just to help herd health more than Yeah, anything. yeah, to keep the health, you know, the herd healthy as we want them. They've not seen you, they don't know you're there. Then there are obviously no stress involved at all. But of course, once you've got deer suspicious that you're there, their adrenaline starts kicking in and the flight is sort of almost ready to go. Yeah. So even if you shoot them then, they're, they're still on their feet and gone. And you just got a more stressed animal, uh, which does affect the way the meat eats as well at the end of the day. All right. Let's go. We quietly moved into the woods, passing by many deer until David found the perfect animal to take. He expertly dispatched it with a shot to the head and then explained to me why he chooses this as his preferred method of harvesting deer. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, depends which way you're sporting or culling. We like to keep the meat in best order it can be, but also it makes our life easier cleaning them out as well. You know, as you're gratting them, which is taking the insides out, heads and feet off, it um, just gives you a clean carcass, as clean as you would get in an abattoir, be it lambs or pigs. You know, that, that's what our aim is to get that quality of product. It's not right for every occasion. We do hard shoot as well, depending on the situation. This is an average size one, or is it quite small? It's, it's a smaller one, that's why we selected it, because it was smaller. You know, there were prickets there even bigger, so that's why we, this one was taken. This is now ready to go, so it's all cleaned out, head, feet off. Basically, it's meat with a jacket on, and that's how they stay to go to the game dealer. Why so, is that? Well, if you, if you skin them here, you've got too many chances of contamination as it gets to the game dealer. So, so this is keeping that meat? That keeps it, and that's how they, the game dealers take it. If we sell, obviously, direct then we skin straight away but that we're not today this is going to the game dealer um, and that's that's how it goes and you so have it's to cold yeah now it'll go th into the chiller straight away because you know this was still basically walking around 20 minutes ago and especially you know summer months you, you haven't got a lot of choice you've got to cool them get them in the chiller cool them down the deer stayed hung in dave's chiller for a few days until i met back up with him at hampshire game one of the largest game processing plants in Southern England. Here he handed over to Steve, who took me through the step of turning this into supermarket ready meat. So this deer's just arrived here. What do you look for? First thing you do is look at the tag to make sure that it's come from a trained hunter from the FSA they train all. So every deer is traceable back to the hunter? Yes, yes, at this stage, yes. And then you look through and make sure that it's, it's shot. It's in season, it's a legitimate carcass, is what, where it's come from is a different place. Each individual stalker has his own ID number and then he signs it off to say that it was a fit and healthy animal when he shot it. And then we have a little look inside to make sure that it's clean and tidy. There's no foreign bodies, nothing in there untoward. And at this point you can see whether the hunter's done his job correctly? Yes, 
Yeah, he's, he's, he has to clean it all out and make it nice and presentable so that it's a nice clean carcass for us. We then take it through and present, get it ready for, to present to the vet to look at. Perfect. Now we've brought it through and we're going to skin the carcass off, take the skin off. And then once it's done that, we can make sure that it's no, no of any damage that we haven't seen with the skin off. And then we can present it to the vet to stamp it as a carcass that's fit to go to the human food chain. So they look a lot more like meat now. What's the next process? The next process is to get it ready for the vet to stamp to say that it's now a, a piece of meat that we can put into the food chain. So both these deer were shot in different ways. You so say you've got a bit more damage on this one. Does that affect the value of the venison or just the quantity? It affects it. the quantity of the venison that we're going to get off each carcass because we lose bits here. When we take, when we band saw it in a second, you'll see we, these bits will be lost. And also on the shoulder of the damaged one, we lose quite a chunk of the shoulder as well. So that will just be discarded into the bin as not not fit for human consumption. Okay. And then the vet's going to have a look at it in a second and he's going to have a look and say, is this a fit carcass so you can now stamp and put through as an approved carcass. Having been stamped and bandsawed, we're going to make it into the, from the primal cuts we've got here, which is a saddle and two haunches, into more supermarket friendly, consumer friendly retail packs. So we're going to cut the shank off, we're going to take the H bone out, and then we're going to break it down into the four muscle bones. So how many portions are you getting off one of these haunches of fallow? Every carcass is slightly different to how many portions you can get it, but it's what, what steak joints we can get out or what main 750 gram type joints you can get out of it. So we'll assess that as he's boning it out, what he can use next. What are the beef name equivalents of these cuts we've got on the table here? So you've got a top side, a silver side, and a rump. We, which we use all for steaks, or if they're big enough, if this one's big enough, we'll make it into a whole joint. So it's quite an equivalent of beef, you can yes. use it as a replacement? Yeah, it cooks just the same. Have some minute steaks, quick frying barbecue steaks, some thicker steaks. That is a proper substantial yeah. steak, isn't it? And then we have a, a haunch, whole haunch joint. And that's, very, for, that's a roasting proper. joint, though. Yes, a roasting joint. So that there is the meat he's got from the damaged shoulder. So you one. can be quite fine, they cut right up to the damage. Yeah, they cut out anything they can see, that's anything in there that they think there may be, so any damage, any blood clots, anything they can remove, and then we just use so it for So it's dicing. perfectly clean meat that perfectly makes it into clean. the food chain? Yes, and then we we'll use what we can for dicing, and what we can't for dicing goes into mince. And so this is a shoulder that wasn't damaged by shot? Yeah, this is an undamaged shoulder, yes. And you'll expect to get a lot more meat off of this one? We will, yeah. And he's, he's still going he to still have to trim it a lot. There's still a lot of stuff that's not human grade to eat. And what does that include? Just sinew, yeah, sinew kind of and thing. stuff like that. Yes. So, in answer to your previous question, how much do we lose? And the, there's quite a lot of meat missing from yeah, the damaged shoulder amount. to the good shoulder. So we can still use all of this. Can still be used for mincing and dicing. And every deer is different when it comes in. Every deer is different. Yeah. So what's this chunk? This, this is a saddle, saddle, so what we're going to do with this, we're going to bone it out and use these two strips here, and then we call those the uh, fillets of the saddle. And they're the best bits. They're the best bits. So he's boned that off now, and that's just pure meat. Yes. Yeah, that's meat. So, and we, make it, we now make it into a joint like this, so nice like that, to, to make a, a small family roast joint. And that'll feed, what, four the, people? It depends how much you want to eat. It's very, yeah. ri it's very rich meat, and it's about 750 grams, 800 grams of meat. So here we have all the finished products lined up. Yes, yeah, so you've got your, your minute steak, slightly thicker steaks, you've got your shanks, we trim the shank off so you minimum waste, you don't want to buy the bone. You've got some nice mints, some chunky diced, a nice haunch joint and a saddle joint. So, and how much meat weight do you get? Because that carcass when it came in was what, 24 kilos? We lose about 34% of carcass weight to meat weight. And that includes the sausage meat, the trimmings that we saw earlier and all bits for mincing. Is it an expensive meat? No, it's not an expensive meat compared with other, with other meats. It's a little bit cheaper than beef. It's um, very good cholesterol levels for you, so it's a good healthy meat to have, nutritious meat, and it, it's very competitive. Does it have quite a long shelf life, venison? No, the shelf life for fresh product is around about 10 days, which is, which is why it's, di it's difficult to get into the, to the main supermarkets. You need to be going to um, easy supply, farmers markets, good local butchers. So this is a fallow deer. Do different deer species taste different? Yes, 
there you uh, mild and stronger flavors as you go through from the smaller carcasses to the bigger carcass big being a red deer so a muntjac is milder than a red yes is it the same price uh, no it, it, there's a different price but the prices aren't set towards the carcass or the taste the taste depends on your own like a lot of your people come here and prefer to buy a red deer and prefer to buy fallow deer and some only want to buy muntjac it all depends on your your taste and how you like your meat and do you label your venison up for the species or do people not really worry that much if someone's asked for it specifically, we will, but the general public generally like venison. It's just venison. Just venison. So we walked in with a deer, and now we've got a box full of venison. Yes, you've got about a third of a carcass in here in various joints. And there's a lot of individual portions here, actually. Once it's broken down, there's a lot of meals on one of these deer. There is, yes. You've got your slow roasting joints, your steaks, diced mints, and your nice and uh, what, roasting joints. Where can someone go to buy this? Online supermarkets. Um, and farmers markets, good butchers. And everything they're buying there is as assured and as checked as it is through here? You, you need to make sure it comes from an approved game dealer and then it's all assured, better inspected. And just as good as anything else? Yes. So there you have it, the complete process from harvesting that ultimate free range animal and turning it into this delicious meat. When it comes to venison, the possibilities are endless. But for me, I find a well-seasoned steak very hard to beat. I for one really find it gratifying to know where my food comes from, and I hope you do too. <laughs>